So welcome in to the inaugural, I like that word, inaugural Red Out podcast. I am half of this dynamic duo, Jake. Say hello, Devin. Hey, how are you? Fantastic, man. So we're going to kind of introduce this podcast and then get into what we want to talk about. So this was established just as two WKU alum who want to talk about everything WKU, uh, especially athletics. And so uh, we're not just going to talk about football and basketball and baseball. We're also going to talk about you know women's basketball, volleyball, which we are kick-ass at, uh, hell, softball, track and field, whatever's going on, we want to talk about it. Isn't that right? That's right. We're going to try and stay on top of it as best we can. I try to follow as best I can. I posted something today about a young lady named Joyner, her last name. I think it's Mary Joyner. Uh, got second in the golf scramble down yeah. in Mobile. Golf. I, f- I forget that golf is even a collegiate <laughs> sport. I just think of like Arnold Palmer or Tiger Woods cheating on his wife. That's all I got. Yeah, I mean, athletic. The golf side of it, they kind of stick out there and they don't really get a lot of attention. But you know, got to show the love. That's true. It's kind of like track and field. We kill it at track and field, but they don't get a lot of love. You got it right. Okay, so well, intro's over. I think we want to talk about. You know, we're three games in. We want to talk about each of the games, what's happened in in football this year under Mike Sanford's first year, and then maybe talk about the ball state, kind of what we think is going to happen. So, Devin, you want to start us off? Okay, uh, I'll start us off. Uh, First game, we had WKU versus EKU. Uh, We kind of dominated these guys with a 31-17 win, but looking on the paper, we really didn't dominate them in the defensive pass uh, coverage, and it really shows when you look at the pass yards. EKU had 320 yards against Jeez. us, and it just, it really just really shows you how much athletics that those guys have. Um, now, on the rushing side of it, they had 25 yards, which just tells me that our front guys, the linebackers, DB, or defensive ends, tackles, they're really covering it, and I think we can expect great things out of those guys. Um, time of possession was another factor. It was pretty even. Um, which shows me that these guys are going to stick with us. Um, I am disappointed that we only had 100 yards rushing yeah, in that bad. first game. Um, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more runs. Looks like Marcus Trigg was the big guy in that one. Uh, 61 yards, averaging about four yards at a time. Uh, Furby really didn't do much. Was that the game that he got hurt? Okay, so he actually got hurt about two weeks. He sprained his ankle about two weeks before the home opener against EKU. And okay. uh, he didn't get – I don't think he got hurt during the game, but he kind of retweaked it. And you know how uh, ankle injuries okay. are. Yeah, yeah, uh, it kind of plagues you, and especially correct. with running backs. Yeah, especially Furby, who's a little angry bowling ball filled with hate. He's like <laughs> 5'8", 240 or something crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to say about the EKU game. The guys came out and basically dominated. Lucky Johnson had five receptions. He was the deep man, Jackson. looks like. Lucky, Did lucky say, who? He said Johnson. Johnson. I'm, yeah, Johnson. I typed that it's, wrong. It's yeah. like a, it's it's, like a it's Austin complete. Powers movie. Johnson. Johnson. Well, we're changing his name to Johnson this week. That's fine. Uh, lucky Jackson. Lucky Johnson. <laughs> lucky Jackson. Got 144 yards. His longest was 66. Now, I think before that 66 yarder, he was averaging, what, 20 yards? So, I mean, that's still pretty good for us. Um, yeah, he was supposed to be. He was supposed to coming into this season. I, don't, I know Fant had a lot of experience last year, but Lucky was supposed to be the guy coming into the season, and he showed out in the EKU game. Exactly. Uh, but, you want to take Illinois real quick? Yeah, I, I will just say that as far as the EKU game goes, all right, I it's kind of a good cop bad cop thing between me and Devin, <laughs> uh, and I, I bet you can guess which side of this I'm going to come in on because I was not <laughs> happy at all. And by the way. Neither were a lot of the dudes in my section where I was sitting that game either because we we struggled at times. Now, I know that they've got L.J. Scott, who's a transfer from Louisville, who's a halfway decent running back who we contained. They've got a defensive uh, – they either got a defensive end or a linebacker that used to be at Western, so legit player. And that quarterback was apparently a transfer from UConn, who – not a football powerhouse, I get it, but fairly good. Okay, all that being said, they are an FCS school. They're not North Dakota State. I know they were not great last year, and maybe they'll win it all this year. I wouldn't be surprised if they won their division or their conference in 
uh, the football, was it championship? It's division? the OVC conference. They're going to be in the Ohio Valley Conference. Right, but they're FCS. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's they're, an they're, FCS you know, they're like conference. 2A, right? Uh, yeah. We, there is absolutely no reason we shouldn't have hung 50 points on these guys. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I, I kind just... of felt the same way, and then I saw the uh, UK game, <laughs> that, that and thing. we actually outscored. We outscored Kentucky, and we and out. And I happy. think that, yeah, I mean, that's you can't complain when that when you have an SEC school, even though it is a bottom feeder like Kentucky, comes in and we score more points. That makes me feel better about this team. I was watching that whole game, going, "God, EKU, just just bring it <laughs> home, man. Just bring oh, it I home. Wish just they would stop have. that. If they fumbled at the, you know, I was listening to the call of that game at the house that Saturday, and I was just like, God." EKU, why did you have to fumble the ball at, like, the one-yard <laughs> line? You had a chance to put it away, and you choked it away. Uh, yeah, and I think it was the big-time kind of nervousness that came across the yips, with that. Man. Mm-hmm. We know about yep. that. Western yep. knows about the yips. Yep, we've had a lot of yips <laughs> this at, <season>. at times. <laughs> it's been pretty bad. When but I no, was I'm... in the world, we had 27 losses straight, so I can't yeah, complain. Was... And you were a trainer on that team, so it's all your fault, right? That's right. Taped them too tight. <laughs> That's exactly right. Didn't run those IVs. They got those That's full right. body cramps. Yeah. You didn't do it right. Uh, now, uh, other than not on the fun. EKU game, like, uh, just getting used to this play style is different. You know, for three years we've had an air it out, really fast, up-tempo offense. It scores a lot of points. Now, our defense has been lacking at times. That was always the one thing with the Braum era was our defense was not that great. Uh, we might have to score 45 points to beat somebody, but we get it done. So it's just getting used to this Stanford, Boise State kind of, I don't know, more pro-style offense uh, is yep. is taking some time for me. I'm not exact. It, it, it's not as sexy. That's the thing. I <laughs> love – I mean, last year at this point we were averaging 15 yards a reception. Uh, we had two receivers. Granted, one of them is an NFL stud in Taewon Taylor, but we had two receivers that had 200 yards three games in. I mean, hell, Taewon had uh, – 121 yards against Alabama last year in week three. So it's it's difficult for me to get on board with the new system, and watching that game kind of ticks me off. Well, and, and you got to gotta give the new system a chance because when Brom came in, he was in the same boat three games deep. That's fair, he, and he finished that first season 7-5. and five, So, And hopefully we don't go with the same pattern that he did, but he beat Bowling Green, he beat... Uh, he lost to Illinois. He did. And I was and looking at my notes here. Kept and he pit. lost to MTSU in three overtimes. Now, I know it was sad losing to, by one point, but God, three I overtimes, to that's MTSU. tough. Yeah, MTSUs, you I don't lose to them. I cannot stand Murfreesboro. <laughs> have you ever, I mean, besides going with the team, you ever just drive through Murfreesboro? Yes, and there's nothing there. It's like Glasgow. <laughs> it's like Glasgow, Kentucky. It's like. Oh, except, yeah. Except there's nicer people in Glasgow that don't hate Western. You know? And let me let me tell you from somebody who worked with the team, the locker room is, like, literally next to a concession stand. Oh, good. So, so like, the like team walks. And, crap. and the, you have the drunk people that try and walk in the locker room, which is always fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of tackle, fun at Western. Did you ever have to tackle a drunk fan? No, I never had. No, personally, I never had to. Uh, one of our offensive line coaches actually had to throw a guy out, so it was awesome. That is. He walked in and was like wanting to get pretzels or something, and <laughs> he's like, "Get out of here!" You know. Give me them cheese pretzels, coach. <laughs> a lot of fun. That's fantastic. okay. Uh, now with the Illinois game, yes. we got dominated. Dear That's God. all there is to say about that. I mean, and. Illinois, on paper, really didn't do a lot. Western, 238 yards passing. Illinois, 107. The quarterback's now, not good. Now, rushing, <laughs> rushing yards, it kind of flips. Illinois, 193 yards. Western, 6. <laughs> now, now, if you don't count Mike White, because those were uh, Negative sacks. Negative yards, yeah. Yeah, he got sacked on those three. We had uh, 25 yards. Still, and terrible. that's still sad. I mean, that's so sad. But, and that's the problem. You can't have a one-sided offense. You know, you can't have the extreme passes and expect to do well in the games because Mike White's going to be pressured. The, the line's going to get more pressure. The running backs are going to have more pressure when they try to do these little quick routes out in the flats or whatever. And you can't expect the team to function as well you got to have the run game to buff the passing game. That's true. 
That's true. I will say in this game, uh, one of the things that kept... Fr- so, like, positives from this game, <clears throat> very, very, very <laughs> few. The only thing I will say, right, is uh, the the one positive that I saw was defensive energy. I, I know, like, Illinois, they're, they're, they're trash. I'm sorry. They're bad. I think they're going to finish. Either them or Rutgers are going to finish last in the Big Ten. They're really, they're going to get owned by every single team they play from here on out. They are bad. However, they one and so one thing that we got to do or that I saw us do was defensive energy. We had gang tackling. Anytime anybody got the ball from Illinois, we were on their butt. So that was the one takeaway that I was like, oh, okay. It seems like maybe something's coming together, but the offense was just. Oh God, it was so bad. We couldn't find any rhythm. And the number the number one thing from this game, my number one takeaway was that uh, Sanford got the yips and Mike White got the yips. I don't know what happened. Uh, you cannot expect to do the exact same plays over and over and over and over again and achieve anything new. We were throwing. Uh, there was a fourth and long where we threw a screen pass to the line of scrimmage. What? Like I realized okay. that if we hadn't been able to run, right? Well, and in in their defense, like I said before with the rushing, if you throw screens, the problem is you've got such a passing game right there that everybody's on their heels. Illinois, like their whole secondary is going to be backing off, and you're going to have a three man rush. But the problem is you have to have that rush in order for them to think, oh, you know, the running back, oh, the quarterback's going out. Something else is going to happen here, and when yeah, you're I mean, getting straight passes, you're you're not giving them any options. Well, yeah, but on a fourth, that screen's and not like, going to work. Like, it was like four, well, that's what I'm saying. It was a terrible play call. Like on fourth and eleven, yeah. you don't throw a little bubble pass to the line of scrimmage and just go, "Go, boy, get eleven yards." Like especially when it was a late, <laughs> it was a late game. It's like, what the hell are you doing, Sanford? And that was one of those things. And then after that game, you know, the interview, he said, "I believe in this system." I've seen it win New Year's Six games. We just got to find the right personnel. And that was my lowest point of the season so far. I was like, this guy has his head up his butt. He has no <laughs> idea what he's doing. He's just going to keep doing the same 10-year-old play calling that Willie Taggart had to change at South Florida to not suck. Because, uh, you know, he lost a hell of a lot when he went down to South Florida. Uh, but I will say, after watching the La Tech game, there is more hope. It's deflating. But I will say, I have more hope uh, for Sanford's evolution as a coach after seeing him coach that game. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, you're going to go through your struggles, and, and for obviously Sanford in this one, the struggle is going to be with um, getting out on your feet and kind of like a new car or whatever you want to call it. Um, these guys have to see how things work. And they got to work well together. And when you get a new system, it's kind of it's going to be ups and downs, and you're going to have to watch exactly what's going on, trying to figure out, hey, this works well, this doesn't work well. And sadly for us, <laughs> Illinois knew what we were going to do, and they oh, stopped us flat. They got pwned. I will say, look, good things about Illinois, right? Because I don't want to call them a trash team without acknowledging the actual good things that they do, right? Uh, their secondary is halfway decent. It's it's at least experienced. Uh, that Epstein kid, the running back, the freshman, is a legit talent. Uh, he's a legit Power Five talent. Uh, he's a good he's a good rusher, and he can catch passes out of the backfield. And that uh, what was that? Dude? I can't remember the wideout's name. Started with a D, like Durante <laughs> or something. I know it's a uh, weird ass last name, yeah. but he was he was stellar. I don't know how many yards he had, but I know he was, he is like an actual I don't know like third team Big Ten or something. So he's he's a real player. So they had some stuff, but God, we should have hung more than seven on them. Like we were yeah. favored by eight going in. And we just got blitz. Like I can't say like Vegas probably lost a lot of money that weekend if anybody bet on that game. Not that that many people bet on the Western game. Ugh. And honestly, that's kind of what I was thinking going into that game. I thought there's got to be Western fans betting on this like crazy for us to have an eight point advantage. A lot of the I late, just, a lot of the late money did come in on Illinois though. I have to say that like big bets. And and I don't think Illinois is a trash team. I think that Illinois is going to be. Uh, I think they'll be mid of the middle of the pack as far as their conference goes. I think Rutgers is going to finish last because I've heard they've gotten horribly, horribly a lot want, worse than where they are now. You want to talk about a trash team? Rutgers yeah. is a trash team. They've I kind wish. of fallen apart, and, and I hate that because you know they're they're not a bad team. They've got good young men on there, and they could probably do well. But 
Nothing no, I say not is helping. bad about the players. I'm sure all of these players <laughs> oh, no. are are Sunday school teachers, and they go to church, <laughs> yeah, and they're I'm great, sure. and they go and they're and they're all they're in class at 8 a.m. None of them skip class. I'm sure <laughs> their grandmamas will say nothing but good things about them. I'm positive I, of that. And I'm not, I wasn't saying you're saying they're trash. <laughs> I'm just saying that they may not have the talent that some of their competition has, which would make their level, their playing level, not. Illinois, if, if Illinois doesn't finish teams. last in the Big Ten, they'll finish second to last. I guarantee it. Okay. Uh, now, Louisiana Tech, uh, uh, you want to go with what your prediction was pregame? I was a negative Nancy. <laughs> Look, and you know, and here in my defense, okay, first off, we didn't score that much more than I thought we would. Okay, like five more points. So not that not that off on, on the score on WKU's end. However... Based off the two games that I had seen, a eventual win against what may end up being a decent, you know, for the for you know Division Two A uh, or Division One Double A, whatever it is now, uh, team. Okay, fine, and then getting blitzed by what I consider an inferior Illinois team. LaTeX's a good team. I thought I thought we were going to lose like thirty one seventeen. I thought LaTeX was going to come in to the house and absolutely just roll us. Now, I, and I'll back up your prediction there. I didn't think they were going to roll us. I thought it was going to be a little bit closer because looking at the stats, they were a 500-yard team, and I thought, oh, man, can our defense stick with them when Illinois is throwing points on the board like no other, and we right. couldn't stop them. And so my prediction was 31-28. Of course, I'm the optimist out of the two of us, but, you know, that's just how it goes. Right. Good cop. Uh, now, passing, I mean, let me tell you, those guys, they stuck in there, and I will say for Mike White, his completions, he, he was 25 for 35 with 226 yards, and I agree with Coach Sanford on this. When balls hit receivers in the hands, they should pull that in. I mean, a and there was five of those. That Xavier should put him at 30, freaking 35. Lane. Xavier freaking Lane. Yeah, and... Hey, that's just repetition, guys. You got to go out there and put yourself in the situation so that you can continually get yourself better. But I mean, you can't complain. Mike White's QBR rating seventy one point two. Jay I mean, Smith for L Tech fifty six point eight. I mean, I can complain about anything, man. Don't don't uh, get me started on complain, that. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, let me say for this game, Baker was a beast up until the fourth quarter. That kid was awesome. And I was completely on his side the whole time, and I think that was one of our problems going into it. And then when Overstreet went out going into the fourth or the third quarter, going into the fourth quarter, um, I was really disappointed. And I think that was part of the straws, so to speak, that broke the camel's back with Western. Yeah, that meltdown um, was awful. Baker is one of my favorite players on the team. You know, uh, true sophomore, right? He is the fastest dude. On the team, according to some stories, I've, Devin, have I told you what the coaching staff said when he came uh, to one of their camps? I think no, I have, but I, if anybody, I this. so if anybody hasn't heard it, right? Uh, when when Baker first signed, and they were talking about uh, his tryouts at one of the camps, they they're just recording him with a stopwatch when he's running the forty, right? And he ran it so fast that they didn't think it was right, so they had him run it again. <laughs> And it was pretty much the same. So they got out the good recording equipment and made him run it that time. And they were wow. like, hot damn, this kid's fast. Yep. Now, he's not a big guy, but as far as our shifty in between the tackles back, he's our guy. Yep. I think he is. I think um, – I don't know exactly how it's going to work with him and Furby, but I, you got to have more rush. you got to have more backs back there that can move the ball when we need them to. And I think – that was our problem in the fourth quarter. We couldn't get the first down. We couldn't hit the. We couldn't hit it, and I think that's what hurt us. We needed the first downs. Um, we ate the clock up. Let me tell you, we ate that clock. It was 34 minutes for Western and 25 for Law Tech. You can't beat that. I mean, I know we were talking a lot during the game, but when you're playing the offense that Sanford had strategized for Law Tech, you've got to. Uh, You've got to – I mean, he was trying to eat the clock up, and he's trying to keep Law Tech off the field. And that was probably one of the best strategies I can say for him. Is Except for scoring keep that more power. points than the other team. 
Yeah. <laughs> you got to keep them off the field and you got to keep their defense on the field, get them more out and then take advantage of it. And we just couldn't do that. Dude, I'll tell you, I am happy that Carlos Henderson is no longer with La Tech because last year when we played them at Ruston, all they did the entire game was throw him screen after screen after screen, and it was good for 11 yards every damn time. And I was just like, please, someone hurt that man. Make him <laughs> stop. Uh, thank God. If, if he had been on the team this year, I, dear God, we would have lost by 40 points. It would have been so bad. Well, but no, I, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're good. Go ahead. No, the uh, – well, my thing was with Overstreet, he went out to play right before Knight ran that in. And I'm oh, sitting here – and I'm sitting there watching that. And I'm like, if Overstreet had been there, I mean, I know Iggy was right there trying to make the tackle too, but there would have been two guys that have been at least more of a chance to take that big guy down. Two and, monsters. yeah, I mean, it's just another – chink in the armor and it just it was another reason we probably put it out and didn't you know, get and not, it and not to complain too much about the officiating uh but since we're not affiliated with anybody specific or official <laughs> to hell with those refs oh my god okay first uh, off the targeting call such that crap. was yeah i mean my thing is with the targeting call it's not consistent i agree with sanford he had a uh interview the other day mm-hmm. a post-game interview he said hey one thing for sure, they need to get this thing consistent across all conferences. And if you want to go rough in the passer, that's one thing. But if you want to go there and say, hey, that was targeting when the guy is clearly like throwing the brakes on trying to stop himself, that's bull. I'm sorry. It can't be targeting. And, you know, I heard uh, – shout out to Chad Bishop who does the best – coverage of this team of any like, I like Brad Stevens I like a lot of the blogs but Chad is the man when it comes to WK sports coverage and he was talking about how the new rule I think it's new this year changed targeting to include the chest of uh right the chest of I think you're right uh, yeah. people that they hit and it's not only you only have to knock them down now like they can remain standing which oh wow kind of defeats like it just doesn't seem reasonable now, and- now, and from what I've heard on different affiliates, too, is that the targeting rule does not also apply to the head anymore. It also applies to the shoulders. Yeah, and I'm like, about the shoulders. Well, I mean, I guess I get kind of the neck, you know what I mean? Yeah, if it's I like mean, a little squirrely dude getting run over by Iggy, like, I get that. Yeah. But when you just push, I mean, Overstreet slowed up. Like, sometimes, you, how much does Overstreet weigh? I have no idea Almost off the top of my pounds. head, but I can tell you, yeah. Yeah, getting the, get the game does. This dude is probably close to 300 pounds. I'll tell you what about 300 pounders, though. I was seeing this. If I've looked at the roster like the last five years, and our linemen have gotten bigger and bigger with every recruiting class, and you have got to have those big sum bucks up front. If you don't oh, have yeah. multiple 300-pound guys, you're not going to be able to compete, and we've got them now, and that, that pleases me greatly. Well, I can tell you this as far as weight goes. Most of the time, your offensive line are going to weigh about three, um, but your defensive line are not going to make the 300 pound. They're going to be uh, about 250 to 280. They're going to be faster. It looks like, right? yeah, you want more speed out of these right. guys. They're more like. Um, Especially your dudes on the edge. Yeah, exactly. They're more like station wagons. You want the big horses for. Uh, you want those guys for up front. But it uh, looks like Overstreet on the roster is about 250. Okay, see, there you go. Yeah, so 250 pounds moving at God knows how fast of just anger and hatred. And he pulls up. There's no way he's not going to tap that guy. Like, red oh, yeah, us. I mean, he's going to hit that guy. And that was another complaint I have. Anytime I see a punter and the guy, you know, it's almost, it's almost picture perfect. The guy's running. He lays out to make the block, and the punter kicks it. You know, everything's fine. Everybody runs down on the field. Punters, for the love of God, just fall over. Just yeah, roll, for real, pull a LeBron James here, man. Come <laughs> on. Flop, we flop, have flop. got to get those yards. Pull a soccer play. easy yardage. Yeah, I mean, go for the sucker call. Let that ref try and throw that flag. And, you know, get the 15-yard penalty. We get the offense back on the field. Yeah, you look like a puss, but it's fine. Do ah, it. We need it. Who cares? I want yards. <laughs> I, listen, you know, the Western, especially under Braum, one thing I'll say about him is he let his boys play like convicts. He picked a fight <laughs> against Marshall. He said, legit, I was listening to uh, the – Last his last season in Western, you know, you always do the Kentucky media tour, right? You hit Lexington, you hit Louisville, you hit all the all the stuff. He was up in Louisville talking to some of the guys on ESPN Louisville radio, and he legitimately told uh, those guys, 
yeah, we picked a fight the year Marshall was ranked when we beat him at home. Uh, he said, I told my guys to go out there and pick a fight. Like something yeah. out of freaking Braveheart, because he That's knew awesome. as soon as he got as soon as he got in their heads, he had a shot. And it was funny because that story actually, the guy that corroborated it was uh, the running backs coach for Marshall during that year, and he said as soon as them boys started fighting, he's like, we we I knew we had lost. That was the moment that we lost the game. So I like when our players play like convicts. Oh yeah, I gotta love that. I hate when other teams players play like convicts, <laughs> but that's just me being just me being biased, right? Oh yeah. I, let me tell you, I was just looking at, through this, and I, t- I was so excited to see Tyler Obie is now playing for Western. Now, a lot of people don't know this. Tyler's dad was Terry Obie, who was on the coaching staff when Taggart was here. Really? So I know Tyler from when he was a kid. And let me tell you, that makes me so happy to see this kid playing for Western. Dude, that's he looks awesome. He's a redshirt freshman from Flossmore, Illinois. I mean, that's awesome. I just Flossmore. love that. I wonder if he's got good teeth if he's from Flossmore. <laughs> Yeah, I doubt that's required. I think it should be. If you live in just Illinois, you said, or is it Indiana? Yes, it's Illinois. Il- Il- Flossmore, Illinois, if you're listening, please <laughs> corroborate. Do you guys have a mandatory flossing ordinance? I just, I got to know. For the love of God, they need to change their mascot. It is, is the it? Vikings, you need to make it like gingivitis. Yes, make it gingivitis. That would be the greatest thing. <laughs> a cavity. <laughs> Yes, a cavity. Yeah, stuff cavity. <laughs> random note, random. Did you see the school? They posted this on Twitter. I don't know if you saw it. It was a school out in Oklahoma that were the Cyclones. Oh wow. Okay, okay. but here's here's the funny thing about it. The mascot looked straight up like a turd emoji. Like it looked like a poop emoji. <laughs> it was a, it was a gray. It was a gray cyclone. It looked like a poop emoji. It's just an angry angry, angry turd emoji. I was like, yes, this mascot. Put this guy on sports center. Awesome. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> that is all awesome. Right. All right, so you want to talk about uh, this Saturday, the matchup we've let's, got? Yeah, let's go with Ball State. Now, I'm not one, I'm not wanting to be the negative Nancy between the two of us, but looking at this Illinois game, that Ball State, when they played Ball State, Ball State, Illinois, uh, on paper, Ball State should have won, just yep. straight up. They had 21 first downs. Illinois had 14. I mean, come on, people. You got total yards, 375 for Ball State, 216 for Illinois. That tells me that there were two key plays. Obviously, they had a fumble and an interception, and that put – or wait, I'm sorry. Yes, Uh, Ball State had a fumble they lost, and they threw an interception. So that puts puts Illinois up by two. It's talking about two plays from beating a Big Ten school. Yep, and I mean that's two plays right there. Passing – 240, 204 yards, excuse me, and 145 yards on the other side. I mean, this is there's no comparison here. They I will say a positive totally on that. wipe the floor with them. A positive on that. If you look at the differential between us and Illinois and Ball State and Illinois, we should be able to throw the ball on them. Because if Illinois got 149 yards on them, uh, surely to God we can post close to a 300 level game. I hope so. I mean, yeah, me too. Well, he, Mike White hadn't had one yet, and he's due for one. The only thing that worries me is rushing. And I don't know. Have we heard anything on Baker's injury? Okay, so Baker's injury, they haven't said, uh, at least I haven't heard specifically what it is. Uh, I haven't looked necessarily. I haven't listened to a lot of the practice reports. But during the game and after the game, when they were updating his injury status, they did say it was a rib injury. He walked off on his own uh, two feet, got in a gator, and they took him back. So it could be bruised ribs, could be broken rib. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully now, it's done holding him out. Now, luckily, I can tell you this, from when I was at Western, it was awesome. They, When somebody like that had an injury, we had a nurse in the crowd, she would take our guys to the uh, Western, what is it, what's the medical place over there now? I can't remember I know, the name. It's like Student Health Center. Yeah, it's Student Health. Okay. Took them to Student Health, did the x-rays right then and there, and we could send it to our doctors on campus or that were on the sideline, and they could read it and tell us what's going on. Well, then I'm so sure it's gotten even we better. We should know then. what's going on, yes. Well, they probably just don't release it. I mean, you, you got to keep that stuff close to the chest. you got HIPAA laws and all that, so, I well, mean, not it, they're that, not going to tell us. It. You want to keep it from Ball State, too. I mean, exactly. they're paying attention. Exactly. Um, of course, you're gonna, probably going to see Baker's practicing, Baker's playing at full speed, Furby's right. practicing, Furby's at full speed, and who knows? Um, is Furby's ankle ready to roll for Saturday? What do you say? Uh, I'd, I'd probably say no. I mean, look, I listen, I 
freaking love Ferb. Okay, he had some of the best hits on defensive backs <laughs> that standout season he had a couple years ago. Uh, but ever since he hurt his leg last year, well, no, not last year, year before last, or was it the first game last year? I think it was the first game last year when okay. he hurt his leg real bad. The dude hadn't been right since. He put on a lot of weight. He had to get down weight. Uh, I'm just not sure that he's durable enough to make it through the season, and that makes me sad because watching him obliterate corners <laughs> makes a game. The dude oh, is a wrecking yeah. ball. And, and so another say thing no. with what say you're saying, ball. yeah, another thing with what you're saying though is he's got an ankle injury and he's got ex- excessive weight. I won't say extra weight. Well, I guess I mean, he's he's extra. down a lot. I think he's at a good fighting weight, but in the off yeah. season he was heavy. But and that also hurts him too with the ankle injury because it's more weight on that ankle, and I'll say the training staff's going to do a great job getting him back and trying getting him ready to go. Uh, we'll just have to see how they roll. Now Overstreet, with that penalty being, I'm guessing in the third quarter, he's got to sit out till halftime because you have to sit one full game, and yeah, that's so- really sad. Yeah, that, that's gonna, that's a huge loss because he has, like I said, you have to sit out. Since you have to go a full game, we're not going to get into until after halftime, and God knows what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, you know? and he's actually listed as a starter, so I'm sure when he when halftime hits, they're going to be like, get your stuff, let's go, boy, let's get this going. All right, so Ferb is listed right now at 6'1", 225. So you figure he's really like 5'11", 230. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know how that is, right? He's he's six <laughs> yeah, eleven. The... He's six one with like pads on. You know exactly. Like, yeah, he's height, that's bull. Know? I'm sorry. No, they, I know he's they buff that. You know, right? Yeah. I mean, they do, right? There's no way Mike White's two whatever that. What do they say, Mike White? <laughs> give me a, give me a second here. They say Mike White's two twenty five. I don't think Mike White's two twenty five. He does not look like he's two hundred twenty five pounds. So yeah, he's exactly. He he's might more, be. He might he's be probably two fifteen. I'll give him right. two fifteen. But you want to make him seem stouter. Uh, exactly. Who does look like a like he weighs the appropriate amount is Steve Duncan. Have you seen him on the sideline? Oh yeah. He redshirt freshman. <laughs> he's two thirty five. He looks like he looks like freaking baby Ben Roethlisberger out there. Like, which I'm fine and, with. Oh yeah, I'm good with that too. Hey, you know what? We need these we need these guys to buff up, let the what? weight room get them going. You know. I mean, hell, what was uh, Jared Lorenz? Is that Lorenz? Oh my whatever god, Lorenz. Yeah, the he was. Pro uh, boy. I mean, that guy. I want to say he was like 270 when he played at uh, UK. Right. He I mean, was. Uh, his nickname he was, was the Hefty good. Lefty. The you hefty gotta love lefty that. And Pillsbury Throw Boy. Like, come <laughs> on. Like, you uh, know he was the coach. Coach, where them cookies at? <laughs> I need a Fig Newton coach. I told you when I come off, I want my cookies. <laughs> you I mean, got to love touchdowns. Totally well, fine. and of course he's got a new campaign where he's trying to lose weight. He's up to 500 pounds last year. Oh my god! Yes, and anytime somebody's struggling with weight issues, you got to feel for him. And yeah, you know, hey, true. let him get healthy. Let him get where he needs to be. Um, I think when he was playing, I think it was Canadian League, he was actually up to almost 400 pounds, and he broke his ankle. Why? I mean, all that weight's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, and of course, this the injury happened. A corner was coming at him to tackle him, and (laughs) I do not blame that corner at all because I probably would have done the same thing in his position. And he went for the legs, and Gary couldn't get down. He couldn't get down low enough, and he ended up breaking his ankle. So. That's bad. Okay, yeah. So we got those guys out uh, against Ball State. What do you, What do you think is going to happen? What do you think? What's your prediction? My prediction. I'm going to say it is. Uh, let me look at my, Let me look at my notes here. I'm going to say it's going to be more like. Uh, uh, I'm going to go 28, 21, Ball State, and I hate, hate to do that because I love my tops. Really? But uh, we see where they stand with Illinois. I'm, That's true. I'm hoping that Western comes out. Okay, let's see. Let's see the progression getting better every week. You know, every day you need to get better, and I'm hoping that they can. But do I think that they're ready to beat Ball State? No. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. No, I don't. Okay, so this is going to be real weird. This is going to be a first. I actually think we're going to beat Ball State 24-21. Uh, so awesome. even though I'm about to rant on how much worse we are than we are than we were last year, I, I do. Okay, and, and, here, and here's why. Look, 
I know that Baker's probably going to be ineffective. I know that I know that Overstreet's not going to be in there, but I think Mike White will be a man on a mission back under the lights uh, at home. I think that Mike Sanford is learning. You know, in his one of his pressers this week, the thing that's made me the happiest that that man has said, uh, except for all those times he was signing guys in the off season, right? Because recruiting <laughs> has been great under Sanford. I will oh, yeah. say that the guy he said straight up, we've got to attack more, and he knows it. He knows oh, that yeah. we can't just chew the clock. You, I understand keeping a hot offense off the field. That makes complete sense. Wearing out their defense so that the next time you get on the field, you can light them up. However, we ran the there was a, there was a string in I want to say the third or fourth quarter where we ran the ball five times in a row. Now I know they couldn't stop us. I get that. We were getting four yep. to five yards of carry. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But at that point, I mean, you said yourself, you know, the run sets up the pass, and then we didn't throw the pass. And if exactly. we could have sped it up a little bit, got another touchdown off that drive, uh, I, that might have been the drive where uh, Nuss missed the field goal. I can't remember. But regardless, he said we've got to attack more, and I honestly think they will. I think they'll come out hotter. And I think if Iggy does not murder a man this time, I will be so sad. Iggy, <laughs> listen, he went to school. My sister-in-law went to school with him at South Warren. He's a great dude. He is a leader. And I think the man is going to absolutely obliterate someone on Saturday, and I cannot wait to see it. I want their grandma to feel it. Get I hope I that wait. you are right. Honestly, Me too. I hope you're right. Um, now, what you were saying about the fourth quarter running the game, um, this is what I think they were trying to do here, and I may be wrong, and it's fine if I am. Um, I believe that the coaches were thinking, hey, we've got this one. Let's just keep holding these guys down as long as we can. Don't throw the ball because we're worried we'll throw an interception. They'll run it to the house, and then they're up and touchdown, and then there we are. Uh, you know, now, that's a, that's that a valid may not have been point. the case, but that could have been. And, and, and that's a valid concern, all right? Mike hasn't been as on this season. And, you know, I think a buddy of mine was actually talking about uh, the possibility that Mike White, his numbers last year – probably were had a little bit to do with a guy that's playing on Sundays now, because if you just put it within like 19 yards of him, he'd catch the damn ball. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know. If, I'm sure you saw this. Uh, Cause we retweeted on the account several times. He was the fastest recorded. Taylor Taylor was the fastest recorded uh, receiver that played last Sunday. Oh he's yeah. The fastest guy on the field. And he's not a large man. He's like six one. Well, Super I can tell you man. this. From what I saw on that, that was amazing play. Uh, just running a go route looks like, and he just basically just hit the nitrous and took off. And the dude, and yeah, and Jacksonville's guy had no hope. I don't even think he was in five yards of of Taylor. And it was like, oh wow, okay. <laughs> Whoever was next to him catching the ball was pretty close because he had him covered. And Taywan just like if you watch the replay of that. It looks like he had on moon shoes or something. He just explodes <laughs> like three feet forward in the air with his legs up and his arms out, and he legit the ball just landed. It was perfect. Of course, it's a good pass too. He oh was yeah, a pretty good quarterback. But I can't give Taewon all the credit. But that was an amazing catch, and he was the fastest receiver on Sunday. I love seeing our guys in the NFL. Uh, Jack Doyle's still there, dude. I'm, Captain I'm not Jack sure. is the man. Oh, you gotta love Jack. And um, is Bobby uh, Rainey still in the league? I am yes. not sure. So I'm going to see I... what team he's on now. Yeah, uh, he actually joined a new team, but I can't remember. I want to say the Ravens. Is he on the Ravens? Uh, or they I'm cut? looking at his wiki page right now. I think he is on the Ravens. Yeah, I think he has been on the Ravens. Most... I know he's been on the Ravens before. I think that's the team that initially drafted him. I think he's back on the Ravens. I'm pretty sure. Yes, he is. You're Well, no, he's on the Giants. He's on the Gi No, he was on the Giants, and then he went to the Ravens. I'm pretty sure okay. the Ra it's the Ravens this season. It is the Ravens because I'm on the Ravens page. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he's doing all right. Yep. Hey, I mean, he's you making know what? money. I'm proud of Bobby. He's making a great uh, representative of Western and himself and his community, and you just got to love the guy. I used to call him uh, Booby Miles. <laughs> but you won't win, put Booby in, because that was legit. I mean, you remember. That was our offense. I loved it. Let me tell you, Bobby Rainey had this awesome move and he would he would be running at a guy straight up and he would drag his leg and you can watch the film on him and he would cut opposite and i mean it got him every time and I, i'm telling you I, you just love you just love to see bobby run 
Okay, so you want me to do I, – I hate to – we won't end on a negative note, but I kind of want to get in my little rant. I spent a lot of time <laughs> doing this training conference where I'm supposed to be paying attention, uh, coming up with this, this statistical breakdown. And so I just want to take a second and, and kind of vent my spleen and, and mourn the loss of who I think is probably the top five coach in college football right now, Devin, quit smirking, <laughs> uh, Brahms offense last year versus us this year. Now, I grant – that it's not fair to compare a 35-year-old who's never been a head coach to a dude who's probably going to coach at Tennessee next year when they try to offer him $9 million. But, so, get it, bro. Get it while you can, bud. <laughs> but, last year, uh, just a couple of breakdowns. This time last year, so this is three games in, last year, uh, passing touchdowns. We had five. This year, we have one. It's not good. Passer rating through three games. Now, granted, this one's just going to be split in hairs because one is incredible and one's really good. But passer rating this time last year was 160.66. Right now it's 124.3. Now, we played two cupcakes. Uh, this time last year we had only played one cupcake. But, okay, well, I guess Miami Ohio has a cupcake, so two cupcakes, fine. But we also played Alabama and had some actual decent yardage against them. Uh, why do I think this is? I think it's our system. Uh, but I will say that the comp the statistical breakdown between passing and rushing did not – it surprised me when I looked at it. Uh, last year by this point, we had out of 104 passing attempts, 54% uh, of, of our total plays were passing attempts while 46% were rushing attempts. Uh, this year, 53 and 46. So it's actually not that different. The length of the passes as far as attempts are shorter. Uh, but not as big of a mix-up as I uh, as I thought. We're spending more time on the field. We're spending the we're spending more time in possession, which has a strategic advantage. Uh, but we got to score. That's just bottom line. I will say that maybe the reasons for Mike White's differences is is Taewon Taylor. I mean, just plain and simple. Taewon Taylor and Nicholas Norris by this point last year had each had 200 yards receiving, uh, and L Lucky Jackson by the way uh, at this point last year had had 99 yards. Uh, and, and I think he was a redshirt freshman maybe last year or sophomore. So he uh, – or maybe it was a junior. I can't remember. But anyways, he had 99 yards and had played against Alabama, so it was pretty good. Uh, I'll say on the rushing and on the rushing side, actually, interestingly enough, uh, it, it wasn't that different coming into the third week because we just couldn't run a ball against Alabama. Uh, at this point in the season last year, we didn't have Ace Wales, who we all know is a machine. I'm so surprised he's not even on a practice squad anywhere. Uh, but it just pains me to, to see the this play style, but at the same time, statistically, we're not that much different. And that's what kind of, after the Law Tech game, after being deflated, that's what kind of has brought me off of that ledge of, I want Sanford Ted uh, because he's a new guy. It's a, it's a different system. And stats-wise, except for uh, yards per reception, which this time last year were 15-ish this year. I think it was 15.7 last year. This year it's 10-something. So we're, we're still doing fairly well. Uh, it just – it pains me to say it, but it, it's not that bad. But I just, I just do, am not used to this style of play. So – that's my rant. It's not as net. It's not as nasty as I thought it was going to be, uh, because the stats don't paint as negative of a picture as the cloud right now in Hilltopper Haven. Dear God. Oh, dude, did you see that story today? By the way. No. What, what are we okay, talking about? Okay. So, so, so on Hilltopper Haven, and this is so funny because those people they're nuts, right? Don't don't go read stuff over there. They're crazy. Hilltopper <laughs> Haven. If you're listening, I don't care. Y'all freaking nuts. And here's why. On Saturday. Okay, see, sometimes we have this thing called a red out. Oh, Everybody okay. wears red, <laughs> hence the name of our friggin' podcast. <laughs> sometimes we choose another color. Devin, what's our other color? Oh, like of our school? let's see. We're red, and then we're also white. White, huh. okay. Now, some genius, some, you know, child of God, <laughs> saw an email that was sent out to the alumni, and this was an alumni because there was an email that was sent out to. Oh. Saw an email that said Saturday whiteout. Yeah, and I, so they. Asked I have seen this story. Chad Bishop, 
on Twitter. I'm just, it's Chad Bishop, Brad Stevens one. Oh. At the, asked if Mike, can you confirm that Mike White is out for Saturday? And it was oh. because they received an email talking about what we're oh. all supposed to wear Saturday. And I was like, this, this is the, these people, these, this is why we can't have nice things, Western. <laughs> exactly. Because these are the people on your boards. Holy crap. You know, I mean, and it's almost like over here in a conversation and you mishear what somebody says and all of a sudden everybody goes, Mike White's out? And you're like, oh my God. no, why would Mike White be out? Dude, for real though, if Mike and, White was out, my, 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 my prediction would be way different. Uh, I'm just going to throw that out Yeah. There. And I mean, I, who's his backup? Is that Shane Lee? Freshman? Who? Or is no, there, no, we got, some, it's, oh, we got uh, another guy, don't we? No, you got two other guys. You got Drew Eccles and you got uh, Stephen Duncan, the redshirt freshman. There you go. Yep, you got it. Uh, and, yeah, and Eccles will be uh, in there. Okay. Eccles is pretty good. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Eccles is pretty good. But, okay. But still, dear God. <laughs> like, All right. That's, uh, I think that's a pretty decent way to end the podcast. Yes. With the wide out. Oh, yeah. So don't listen to the people on Hilltop or Haven. That's all we're saying. Exactly. Don't don't listen. Get your news here first. Right, yes, exactly. We've almost <laughs> got 100 followers on Twitter. We're big shit now. Oh, yeah. Right, now, okay. oh, go you go right ahead, dude. Uh, I was going to close it out, so you got one more thing to chip in. Go I've ahead. got one more thing here. Awesome. Um, we are making progress as a team. We need to support our players, support the staff, support the coaches, show up, and red out. Except for Saturday. We'll Except for Saturday. White. We're going to be white out. <laughs> but white. that doesn't mean white Mike White's out. <laughs> no, he's not out. God. God, Tina. Uh, okay, yeah, that's that's all we got. Thank you for listening to this inaugural Red Out podcast. We're going to try to do these, what, weekly as, exactly. as best we can. We're going to try to get weekly. these out weekly. Uh, may record uh, more just – you know, we get pissed off, whatever. Uh, <laughs> there you but go. But we're, we're going to try to get it out, and it's going to be on YouTube, on, on our YouTube channel, which this should probably be the first video over there because we haven't done anything yet. So thanks, thank you all, and have a good day.